Welcome to Hacking Arcade ROMs Lesson 3, Finding Static Data and Modifying It, or the Pac-Man Ghost Name Hack. In this lesson, we are going to actually hack our first ROM. We're going to do a simple hack. We're going to um, learn how to find specific sections of the running memory. Um, in this case, we're going to look for specific text. We're going to learn how to figure out what ROM that text is associated with in the ROM's files. And we're going to learn how to edit um, a ROM with the hex editor. Along the way, we're going to learn a couple cool um, commands in the main debugger that will allow us to, to find what we need. At the end, we're going to actually have hacked a Pac-Man ROM and replace the character nickname Blinky with our own name. So, although this is a very simple hack, it, it's, it's, it's kind of fun because you're going to actually start to learn s some of more in-depth things and the fundamental skills you need to do to do more advanced stuff. At the same time, you will have actually um, done something visible and tangible. You will have actually hacked a ROM and, you know, if you have kids, you can hack in your kid's names to the, the Pac-Man Ghost characters. By the end of this ROM, you'll be able to, do, or this lesson, you'll be able to do that. So it's going to be pretty fun, I think. Let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is to actually bring over the ROM we're interested in, the Pac-Man ROMs, and uncompress them so that we can work on them. So I'm going to go to my computer here, and I'm going to type E colon to bring up my file explorer and go to the E drive. Again, if you used it, you didn't use E, if you use C, you just type C colon. If you use D, wherever you put it, you have to remember that from episode lesson one. But I used E, so I'm type E colon. And there is my MAME folder. So let's click into there. And ROMs. And again, I can't tell you where to get the Pac-Man ROMs from. If you Google them, you'll find them very easily. Just don't get any malware on your computer. But I got mine on my computer here because I'm a legal owner of the Pac-Man ROMs because I own a Pac-Man. And I'm going to go ahead now and uncompress it. It's very important we uncompress them or unzip them. So it unzipped it. Boom, 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 done. It shows me the ROMs. It's got an E, MAME, ROMs, Pac-Man. These are the Pac-Man ROMs. Excellent. Very important step. You must delete the original zip file. If you don't delete the original zip file, as we edit the, or the actual ROMs that are in this folder, our changes won't be, they won't show up because MAME will actually just use this zip file. So let's just go ahead and delete it. You might want to back it up, put it somewhere else on your computer in case you screw up and you want to restore them. But I need it out of this ROMs folder, so I'm going to delete it. Good. All right. Now we have to go into the MAME program. Now what we need to do is to fire up the MAME debugger. So go to our little Windows type in run command prompt there. Type CMD because I want a command prompt. Again, I got to go into that E drive. So I'm type E colon to switch to the E drive. Then I'm going to type CD MAME because that's where my MAME folders are. I'm changing the directory to the MAME drive or to the MAME folder on the E drive. And let's go ahead and start MAME with the debugger. MAME 64 Pac-Man debug. Okay, so my debugger's up. To start the program running, hit F5. And I want to alter the credits or the character names. So Shadow Blinky, let's, let's grab Blinky. Um, I want to add the Blinky and make it my name rather than Blinky. So how can we do this? Well, now that we, you know, we figured out where we want to edit things, we want that blinky. I'm going to restart the, um, the main system from scratch. I'm going to hit Shift F3. If you go to debug and you look over hard reset, that's Shift F3. So I'm going to do that because I want a clear slate. As MAME is running, it's co it copies data from the ROMs to the memory and does all kinds of stuff. So I want a clean slate. I want to only see what is already there before the system even starts. Okay, 
So um, now I'm gonna show you, we know we're looking for the, the, the text that says Blinky. How can we find that? Well, there's a couple ways you can find it. Um, you could actually look in the ROM files directly and see if you can find them. But it's a good introduction to the debugger if I show you how to do it with a debugger, okay? Because ultimately you're gonna wanna find things in the debugger that's actually not on the ROMs that are in the RAM section. So let's go ahead and uh, show you how to do this in the debugger. If you type help into the debugger screen, you can see all kinds of different topics you can get information on. You can type help, for example, execution. And it'll tell you things about uh, running the program. You can type help watch points. Show you how to use the watch point commands. I'll explain what watch points are later. Right now, we want to actually find, um, so you, you can use the help command to, to find commands that, in, that I haven't shown you yet, if you wanna jump ahead. Um, I'm gonna show you the commands that I'm gonna use. We're gonna use the find command to search through memory. Uh, I'm just type find. Yep, that didn't work, I'm type help find. And it gives me some examples when I type help find. Shows me um, some different usages of this command. And this one right here looks exactly like what I want. Find, and then it takes an address. And this is, these addresses are in hex, even though they don't start out with a zero X. Um, although I will always type a zero X when I type them because I want it to be clear. Find from address zero th through um, hex one zero 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 zero, which covers all the space. Actually, if you look down here, most of the old computers, their address ranges, all the old video games, I mean, their address ranges go from zero to FFFF, -F -F, okay? If you do a find from zero to um, this number here, which is actually one more than FFFF, -F -F, you will search through the entire address space of the program, okay? That's everything the program can access. So that's, that looks good. We wanna search through all of the program's memory, and I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna do it and um, be very clear that this is a hex number because if you use some debuggers and you don't put the zero X, it assumes you're typing a decimal number and then you never get the results you want. So I always like to specify hex numbers with a zero X, okay? And then it's looking for what, we're, what we actually are looking for. So um, I want the word blinky, okay? And in this case, it wants a zero at the end because some, some languages like to end their text, what they're called strings with zeros. Um, Pac-Man doesn't need to do that. And even if it did, we don't, even if the program does, we could just type Blinky and that would be fine. Um, so let's do that. Find from address zero through all the addresses. This actually means, uh, this is a count of how many addresses we wanna search through, which means um, we wanna search through that many addresses, which is I think 65,000 something. Uh, it's all the addresses on the system, okay? And look at that, it found it in two places, 3D6A and BD6A. Well, oof, well, I wanna, obviously I wanna edit one of these, which ones do I want to modify? That's a good question. Well, there's a couple ways you can find that out. One, you can look through the main um, information files and figure out which one of these addresses corresponds to a ROM range. Um, and it would tell you very clearly, or you would, you would figure out very clear, cl clearly, it's this one right here, 3D6A. But I want to again show you the purpose of this, this exercise is to actually get you kind of working with the debugger a little bit and, and, um, and using it. So let's use the debugger to figure it out. It could be one of these addresses, which one is it? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply use one of the debugger commands to watch these addresses. And there's a command called WP set, which sets a watch point. What a watch point does is it lets the program run until one of the addresses you specify in the watch point is accessed, whether through a read or a write, and then it pauses the program and shows you what actually accessed it, okay? So I'm gonna set a watch point here. And to set a watch point, it's WP set, and then the address you're looking for. So let's try this one, 3D, 6A. And then it's how many addresses you would like to, the watch point to cover. I only care about the first one. So as soon as it hits that first address, that B, I wanna know. And then the final comma and the final um, option you have to give it is whether you want, you're searching for reads 
to that address or writes to that address. So I do an R for read. Hit return, it says WP or watch point set. If I do a do WP list, it will show me all the watch points that are set. It says watch point one, looking from address 3D6A through 3D6A, that's only one address, because I specified one, and it's looking for reads to that address. Great, let's start it up. Hit F5 to start the main program running. And it will go through its test sequence. You can see it's running code here. That's what code is running. Shows you shadow and boom, it stopped. Watch point one, reading byte from 3D6A, okay? And we know it's that next thing it's gonna do is blinky, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to write that down. I'm gonna just, I like to use a piece of paper and a pencil, but I'm going to um, use WordPad. And I'm just gonna write down blinky at 0x3d6a. Let's try that again, 3d6a. Three, I'll just minimize that. So I know that's the address that corresponds to where my data is. Okay, because it stopped there. If I hit F5 to continue, you'll see it does blinky right away. Okay, great. So I found the address I'm looking for. Now the question is, and I know I wanna change this blinky to, to be something else. In this case, I'm gonna put my name Brian. Um, what I need to do next though, is find what ROM is responsible for um, that address range. That is what ROM holds the address ultimately 3D6A when it's, when it's read into the, the running program. Um, so to do that, we have to actually exit out of MAME and use another utility. So let's go ahead and close down MAME. Now we need to find out what ROM file corresponds to the data that is what's called mapped. So each of the ROM files holds some small piece of that game code that is ult ultimately copied into those locations, um, into the what's called the address space. Um, we need to find what ROM is responsible for holding the data that is stored at address 3D6A. So there's a tool that we can use to use this. And I'm gonna pull up my command prompt, which I've done a billion times by now. I'm gonna C, move to the E colon drive. So I'm gonna type E colon, CD to MAME. And a tool that MAME provides that actually gives us information on the ROM files is if I do MAME, 64, the name of the game, Pac-Man, and list XML, what that would happen is it would print a bunch of information to the screen about the game. I don't want it to print it to the screen. I want to actually save it to a file so I can look at it with a, uh, you know, a nicer editor, like WordPad. So I'm going to type MAME64 Pac-Man list XML, and this character right here that I just typed, greater than, means send the data rather than print it to the screen, send it to a file. And I'm going to call that file pacman.xml. Okay. So I just created a file called pacman.xml in my current directory, which is e colon main. And if I type dir pacman.xml, you can see the file exists now. Okay. And I need to bring that up into WordPad. And the, when typing, when bringing up WordPad from the command prompt in Windows, you literally type the word write. It's not WordPad, it's write. I don't know why they did it. I don't know. Don't ask me. So I'm going to type write pacman.xml. And there we go. We have this XML file, which has all kinds of information about the, um, the, the, the program or the, the, the uh, main driver for this, 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 this program, Pac-Man. Okay. And each one is different. Each, each, this is for Pac-Man. If I typed a different name, you know, like Centipede, I would get different information. I'm very interested in finding something. So I'm gonna hit Control F to search. I'm looking for something that says ROM name. And, okay, hit X. Um, this is not the one I want, so I'm gonna search for it again. There's a section, there's the, the word here, ROM name shows up. Ah, there it is. Here it is. See, I have a bunch of them that say ROM name in a row. This actually tells us about the ROM files. So you see here, we're looking for, um, this, this line defines information about a single ROM file, Pac-Man 6E, and this one, Pac-Man 6F. 
this one, Pac-Man 6H, Pac-Man 6J, so forth and so on. And notice one of the fields of this line is region main CPU. We are only interested in the main CPU, which has the actual code of the game. Um, you'll see some of them, like this one has graphics, GFX. Um, if you were trying to edit the actual little um, pictures, the sprites, you'd probably look in one of these ROMs. But we don't want to edit the images. We want to edit the actual game code and the text that has the word Blinky. So I'm only interested in the ones that say ROM, I'm sorry, main CPU. Okay. And what you see here is the ROM name. This is the actual file that shows up, Pac-Man 6E, 6F, 6H, and, and 6J. Now I bring my browser back and I go back to the main ROMs. You can see in the ROMs, that's where all the files were named. Pac-Man 5E, Pac-Man 5F, Pac-Man 6E, 6F, 6H, 6J. Okay. These are actual individual files. And there's some other information. There's an offset. Each file is, is loaded into the, the main program, and the, the data is copied at a certain address. So all the data in this file is copied starting at offset zero. Okay? And the, the size of the ROM file is, and this is in, this here is in, these are, Offsets are in hex for some reason. They write these in decimal. And again, this is why you always write a OX in front of a hex number. So you can tell the difference from hex and decimal because they look the same. Uh, it just happens I know that, that in this case, these, these are decimal. Uh, size 4095 is really like saying, it's equivalent to saying size uh, 0x FFF. So, Actually, it's saying this, okay? Um, it's that many bytes, okay? So what's, what it's really saying here, and I'm gonna delete that. Well, maybe we'll just leave it there because it doesn't matter if I edit this file. I'm just gonna edit here so it, it's a little more clear for you. What's happening is it's gonna load this file, 6E, at starting at address zero, and the file is this many hex bytes long. So it's gonna go from address zero to address, um, well actually it's gonna be one less than this. It's gonna be zero through one, I'm sorry, zero FFF, okay? So 6E goes from a range zero through, okay? And again, um, I can just put that in there. It doesn't, it's not gonna hurt the file because I'm just using this as a data file. Now the next one, ROM 6F, starts at offset one, and again, it's this big. So this range is zero, I'm sorry, one, zero, 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 through zero X, one, FFF. Okay, so any data that, when we run the main debugger that shows up in the range one, zero, 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 through one, FFF, actually was, brought in from this file. 6H is going to be 2000, the offset, and it goes for 2, 2000 FFF, or 2 FFF. And then 6J starts at 3000, and it goes through 3 FFF. Well, we know we're looking for the address 3D 6A. So that's going to be in this range. So this is the file that we need to edit, 6J. So um, we're gonna have to edit 6J with our hex editor. But before we do that, I wanna show you one other info useful thing that shows up in MAME XML. If you look at this tag, source file equals pacman.c, and you Google that, if you type, if you Google MAME and pacman.c, you will find um, a lot more information about the game itself, about where things are and how things work. And often someone, uh, often there'll be all kinds of comments about um, that help you debug things. I actually use these a lot when I fix arcade games because people have reverse engineered and put a lot of the information directly in this, in, in this file that I'm, I need to fix games. Um, same with hacking games. As you do the more advanced stuff, um, 
you might want to actually use MAME XML to figure out what the source file is and then go to Google and pull down this source file. Um, so just, I just keep that in mind um, for, for later, that MAME XML not only can show you the ROM ranges, but it will point to this source file and you can use that and get more information later. That said, we know we want to deal with this ROM. We want Pac-Man 6J. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, write that to my, my notepad here where I'm keeping notes. I'm gonna type address 0x3d6a comes from whatever ROM that was, Pac-Man 6J, okay? So I know that. Great, let's close down this window. And we can delete this pacman.xml file. I can type del pacman.xml and it's gone now. I'm gonna type dir pacman.xml, say no such file. So good, we're done. Um, now we need to move to the hex editor. So now we've used main list XML to show the ROM files and what, ROM, and what address ranges they're associated with. And we determined that um, the address we're looking for, 3D6A, is stored in the file pacman.6j. So let's get to editing. I'm going to go ahead and go to my E drive, to the main folder, ROMs folder, Pacman folder. I'm gonna click on 6J, and I'm gonna open it up, I'm gonna right click and open it up with Hex Workshop. Now, I'm gonna make my screen a little bit wider here. And I just wanna, I want this range to go from zero through F and then I wanna have a zero through F here just so it's easier to read. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that. Now, we want to look for the, or we want to edit the, the, the thing that says Blinky starting at 3D6A. So when you, if you wanna jump to a, an address, you go in up to here, click on go to, make sure it says hex, and it says from beginning of file. And then you put in the offset. Now you don't, with hex editor, you don't do a zero, in this, at least in this one, you don't do a zero X, um, or a, you don't have to put the zero X in front of it. Just put the address you want. Now we wanted to address three D6A. And I hit return and it goes, I don't know if you can hear that, but it made a boop sound. Error, why is that an error? Well, it's because there is no address three D6A in this file. This file is loaded, this file only contains the range um, zero, I go over here, zero through one, zero, 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 okay? It's, it's not that big. Remember, multiple files are created and loaded in at those offsets that it, it's specified in the main.xml file. And this offset started at 3,000. Remember, it, the offset it said started at 3,000? So, I'm gonna, this is the jump thing again. Um, this is just a, a quick shortcut to it. So I'm gonna type 3D6A, and because it was already loaded at address 3000 into the main program, we have to subtract 3000 to get the actual offset into this file. So it's just simply D6A, okay? So you just remove that first three. Click return, and it jumps immediately there, and you can see here. Um, you see 42, wait, that's not blinky. 4C, that's not blinky. But it is, this is the hex representation of this character, this, this letter, okay? This is called a ASCII, ASCII representation, A-S-C-I-I. -I. Um, so 42 is B, 4C is L. Well, oh man, does that mean I have to figure out what the, the characters, the representations that I want and then put in those hex numbers? No, nah, not really. Because Hex Workshop is a nice hex editor. You just go to the right side, this is the ASCII side. And you literally type the what you want to appear. So I'm gonna type B R I A N and it appears. And then there was one extra character left over. Um, remember there was there were six characters in Blinky? So um, this this one here, I'm just type space because I probably want a space. Okay. And you see it's saved. Okay. I'm gonna put a 20 there as a space because that's ASCII 20. So I have B R I A N. Okay. Let's save it. And exit. So save it and exit. And close down this window. So let's now see 
if our changes actually took effect. So I'm going to bring in my command prompt, switch to my E drive, see the main folder or the directory, and I'm going to type main 64 pacman debug. And look at this. First of all, very very important something you notice. This time when I when I uh, type this in, it says pacman 6j wrong checksum. MAME actually keeps track of what the ROMs are supposed to look like effectively. It, it checks what's called a checksum. And uh, it's saying it's expected this, but found this because we edited. So this actually is good. This means that MAME is seeing that the changes we made, um, it's actually seeing them. If it, if it showed nothing and just went on normally, probably you forgot to remove that zip file. It's, it's not actually, or you forgot to save your ROM file after you edit it. It's not actually seeing any changes. So if you didn't get this message, you want to make sure you want go back and actually make sure that those that you save the changes and that that zip file um, that we did from the beginning of the lesson, you actually removed it because if the zip file's there, MAME will try to read the zip file first, okay? So this is actually good. Normally this means that something's corrupted, but we specifically corrupted the file, we altered it. Um, and this means that, you know, MAME sees that. Excellent. Okay, so now let's see if it worked. Hit F5 to start the debugger, or to the start MAME running in the debugger. It's doing its testing there that you're, you always see. And Shadow, Brian, oh wait, so close yet so far, what's this? This little junk at the end, that's not what I wanted. I wanted a space there. Ah, but still, we got all this. We got the Brian. And then we have some junk there, which leads me to the next part of the lesson here, is we don't want that junk there. How did it get there? Well, let's, let's do some um, analysis, if we will. What happens when, um, how this video hardware, or how this video game works is, when the game wants to write or draw to the screen, it actually writes numbers to certain special places in RAM where that is associated with the video hardware. So I can write a number um, to RAM like 42 and B shows up, okay? Um, what we need to do is find out where that RAM range is and find something, because we type space and apparently MAME doesn't understand the space character. The ASCII 20 doesn't mean space for this, um, not MAME, but Pac-Man. Pac-Man doesn't treat at 20 as a space. So we have to find something that Pac-Man does treat as a space. So we have to find something that we can put there um, to get rid of that, that junk. But this is actually a very neat um, exercise because we're gonna sh show you how to actually access the video RAM and find the video RAM first of all, access it, and then uh, modify things to see you know, what changes. So what we're gonna do is remember that WP set command? I need to find out where the RAM is getting written to. Or where the where my my you know that Brian and then that that, that twenty that ASCII t or that that hex twenty um, is getting written to. I know where it's say where it's read from, but I want to know where it's getting written to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a watch point back on that address again when it's read, and I bet that shortly after when it's read, it's going to be written somewhere, and I'm going to find out where it's written, and then I'm going to mess around with things. So let's set, do that WP set command. WP set 0x 3D 6A 1 and read. Remember, I want to set a watch point at 3D 6A 1, one address and read. Okay, and then I'm going to hit return. And then I'm just going to kick the, uh, the um, program here. I'm just going to hit F3, which will restart it. It resets the Pac-Man program. And here we go. Shadow, and there it goes. It stopped at watch point one, reading from that byte. Now, um, what's happening here is the main debugger highlights the next line of code. It was the previous line, the previous instruction that actually read from the address, okay? 3D6A. I bet shortly after, after it read from that address, it's gonna write. But let's look at the previous instruction. So here's where it stopped at, which means that the thing before that was the previous instruction. Um, and sometimes it, it's possible the, the previous instruction is not literally linearly the previous instruction. Don't worry about that for now, but it is in this case. The instruction that accessed our RAM 
And don't worry if you don't understand this now. Um, I'm going a little bit off topic, but it's, it's, it's relevant. Um, we'll talk more about assembly and all that in another, in another class or another lesson. But at the same time, it doesn't hurt um, to just kind of do see it now because th you might understand what I'm, what I'm talking about as I explain it. But even if you don't, it doesn't matter. Um, you're going to see this again. For the, the, the point of this class was to learn how to find things in RAM, um, map them to a ROM, alter the ROM, and see that your changes took effect. But I'm going to go a little bit further because it, it's kind of cool. Okay, so the instruction that actually read from RAM was this, 2C84, which is load, LD is load, and it's loading into A, which A is what's called a register. So it's loading from whatever this HL is, and when it's in brackets like this, this means a memory location. Whatever HL stores, which is 3D6A, so th from address 3D6A, which is at our ROM location, read and store that data into A. So it's loading into A whatever was stored at 3D6A. So A should hold the B. And remember, um, so A here is register A, which is this first heart, this is a register AF, the first two, um, it's called octets, this first byte, 42, that's actually our B, okay? So it loaded from our ROM into A the letter B. Then it's, um, doing something here, don't worry about that right now. It, I can actually skip to the next instruction. I use a debug, I can see F11 steps into the next instruction. So I'm gonna skip the next instruction, which is whatever this is, don't worry about what that is. And then we have this one right here. Load whatever was stored in A into memory address, whatever is stored in the register IX plus zero. So IX is 4145, plus zero is obvious. Anything plus zero is just itself. So this is saying load B into the memory address 4145. Huh, I wonder if memory address 4145 corresponds to that video RAM. Let's hit F11 again to, to actually execute the statement. And boom, as soon as I do that, notice my B appears. So that's gotta be it. This instruction load A, which we know has the letter B or the representation letter B, and it got loaded into IX plus zero, the address, wherever that memory is of IX, which is 4145 plus zero, which is still 4145. So 4145 must be um, the, the location in RAM that corresponds to this little block of the video display. And it actually is. So let's bring up our new memory window go over here and let's just type 0x 4145 and look at what we have here. We have 42, which was expected, right? We, we moved A42, which is A, which is 42, not the letter A, the register. It's called like a variable. It's a register A, which held the value 42, which is the value B that we're familiar with. And we can see that they're 42 and that B here is our little ASCII area and it moved it um, into RAM. Well, we can overwrite this. Let's write something else. Let's do 4, 3. And look at that, it changed. And if yours didn't change right away, just do it again. It, sometimes you have to type it a couple times in MAME for it to take effect, I don't know why. I typed 43 though and it became C. 44, D. 45, E. This is starting to, to show a pattern here, don't you think? Um, every time I go up a, a, a value, it's the next highest letter. Okay, so while I know what the next 26 values are gonna be, if it follows any logical pattern, right? Because it's gonna go A through Z. Let's go backwards, because um, I wanna, you know, let's, let's just go backwards. So we, let's go back to 42, which is B. Well, we know 41 is probably gonna be A. What happens when we do 40? Oh, look at that. Magically, everything disappears. 40 must be equivalent to a space. So I'm gonna write that down. We found 40 seems to, to be nothing on the display. It means to be a blank space. And that makes sense, because look at this, we have a lot of 40s here, and we don't see much on the screen. Hmm, good, excellent. So all we have to do now is go back into the hex editor, change that last character that was a space, which is, at, which is hex 20, and change it to a 40 and see if that changes anything. So let's close down everything. Okay, so let's go ahead back into that E drive, into a MAME, to ROMs, to Pac-Man. 
Let's highlight that 6J and let's open that with Hex Workshop. And remember, our code that we want to modify started at address 36DA, but we have to account for the fact that this is the ROM already starts at address 3000 when it's mapped. So we have to remove that 3000 and just six, oops, it's D6A, not 6DA. And we have, there we go, 42 for Brian. Here, we had a space or 20. We don't want that. We want 40. So we're going to type 40 here, literally hex 40. If we type into this side, it's literally the hex representation. If we type into here, it's the ASCII values, and it will convert it to hex for us. But apparently, space or uh, hex 20, which is the ASCII value tw um, of a space character, Pac-Man doesn't understand that. It doesn't show what we expected. But we discover that 40 seems to work as a space. So we'll save it. Exit. And for the moment of truth, let's bring up our command prompt. E colon to switch to the E drive. CD to MAME. MAME 64. Pac-Man. Debug. Okay. Moment of truth. Here we go. Let's hit F5 to start. And does it do what we want it to do? Shadow. Yes, that's what we wanted. We wanted Brian and not that junk at the end. Right? Awesome. So, congratulations, you did your first ROM hack, okay? So now, just from doing what, I, what I've shown you in this lesson, if you have kids, you should be able to actually replace all their names, those four names with their kids' names, um, or if you wanted to replace, rather than the, the nicknames, the actual character names, like, um, for example, um, Shadow, um, or Speedy, or whatever, you could do that. Um, one hint, don't, if your kid's name is longer than the name that they have embedded here, don't continue typing. The maximum you can overwrite here until I show you later, um, maybe in another lesson, is as long as they already had used. So, you know, Inky, you can't make longer than four characters. Clyde can't be longer than five. Pinky can't be longer than five. Blinky can't be longer than six. Um, and maybe in a, in a later episode, I'll show you how to actually change that. Um, so this is cool. Hopefully you learned some things here. And again, this is a, this is a very simple hack, but it's very cool, right? You, we've learned, it, the reason I chose this is because you learn a couple different components. We learned how to go into a MAME, how to find memory in MAME. We figured out how to map that memory back to the original ROM that holds the code used hex editor to change the code, um, then ran our, our new code, and then we, we ran into a bump there, right? We saw that it, that space didn't work out like we thought, so we further learned um, how, to, how to, again, tr um, search for stuff we're looking for to find out where the video ROM is, and then we, you, we manually modified stuff until we found a character that, was, that worked for us. Um, so you learned a lot of things in this episode, and at the end of the day, you can now, if you have a Pac-Man machine you, and you have a ROM burner, you can, uh, using what I've shown you, you can go ahead and finish up the rest of the character names, you know, name them after your kids, whatever. Have a really cool machine in your basement, um, a little personalized. Or maybe rather than down here, rather than this mid-may manufacturing, maybe you want to put, you know, you know uh, whatever your last name is, arcade, doc, you know, whatever. Um, lots of stuff you can do. All right? Well, that's it for this episode. So hope you learned a lot and enjoyed it.